Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gary Linden. I'm the curator of the Chicago Land Combined Veterans Museum, located in River Grove, Illinois. Today, we are going to talk about Civil War artillery. We have a sword and a saber. We will start with the short sword. This is also known as either a Roman style or gladiator style sword. That's what it resembles. The grips, the pommel, the handguard are all solid brass with an eagle motif on both sides. This one is marked US, dated 1839. And it's also marked that it is made by the Ames Manufacturing Company. The double-edged blade is polished steel. And amazingly, this is a pretty heavy, solid sword. I'd hate to get hit by this or stuck by it. Uh, the scabbard is darkened leather. The throat and the bottom are both solid brass. The throat also has a frog stud, so it can be hooked to a uh, leather frog to hold it either on a belt or over your shoulder. Down here we have a light artillery saber. This one's dated 1865. It's also manufactured by the Ames Manufacturing Company in Chippewa, uh, Massachusetts. The uh, Quinlan, the handguard, the knuckle bow, the pommel, and the back strap, these are all solid brass. The handle itself is wood, wrapped with leather, with a wire wrap around that. As you can see, the leather is starting to deteriorate a little bit from wear and use. The blade is polished steel. It is a single edge. Uh, this is another one that you could either stick somebody with, you could slash with it, because this one has the blade all the way on the bottom. And I guess, once again, in close contact, if you wanted to strike somebody this way, you could, or even with the knuckle bow. The scabbard for this sword is, once again, all metal. It has two carry rings. Uh, it's pretty basic. Not really much to this one. This is the drag, so if it was dragging down on the dirt, this is what would take the wear to save the point in the sword itself. Now we just go to a few accents. Um, this is cross cannons. That would be on the hat of a infantryman to signify that he was in the artillery. We also have an original Civil War 10 pound cannonball. This would come out of the cannon, stay in one piece, uh, and that's how either it would strike fortifications, a wagon, or if it, uh, you know, if it hit the soldiers, it would be devastating. I'm sure most of these wounds from this would be mortal, or they would be losing arms, legs, whatever. The last piece we have that the artillery would probably be carrying with them would be a set of field glasses. So uh, they could see what uh, damage the cannons were doing, where, where they were landing, so they could uh, direct the fire. In closing, I would just like to say to all of our military forces from the past, the present, and the future, thank you for your service.